What's going on guys? I'm Pete and welcome to Retro Game Attic. I'm a little late to the party on this one, but I recently snagged the 8-bit DOE SNES Retro Receiver, which allows certain wireless controllers to be connected to the original SNES console via Bluetooth. This retro receiver supports a nice little array of controllers, including the more modern Switch Pro and the PS5 DualSense controllers, which is pretty cool. So for this video, I'm going to try out a bunch of these newer controllers on my SNES and see how they work out. I should mention that modern amenities like motion controls and rumble are not supported, so we're just going to evaluate the controllers on their overall feel and responsiveness while playing on the SNES. So let's get into it. The receiver itself resembles a stock SNES controller hookup, with the inclusion of a red pairing button and a micro USB port for charging. I can't comment on battery life just yet, but I would assume it's pretty robust. I'm going to start out on the supported PlayStation controllers in chronological order, so first up let's try out the PS3 DualShock 3. An interesting tidbit about this controller is that I actually found it in the trash, along with a few consoles and games, but that's a story for another day. Pairing this controller takes a little bit of legwork. I first had to download the PS3 pairing tool and then connect the PS3 controller to my computer via the provided USB cable. I press the red pair button on the receiver itself, and then finally I press pair in the software. Unfortunately, the retro receiver was not detected on both of my Macs, so I couldn't pair the controller. I'm still waiting to hear back from 8-bit DOE support, but in the meantime, let's graduate to the DualShock 4. This time around, it's a little bit easier to connect. We'll press the red pair button on the receiver to enter pairing mode, then press the share and PS buttons simultaneously on the controller for 3 seconds until the LEDs become solid. And we're connected! So far so good. The DualShock 4 is such a nice step up from the 3. It's super comfortable and feels okay to play SNES games with. I can definitely see myself trying this controller again in the future. Now on to the mighty DualSense. Pairing this one is a similar process to the DualShock 4, with the difference being that we hold down the create and PS buttons simultaneously to connect. And let's see how it works on the SNES. The DualSense is a comfortable controller, and it feels pretty wild to use it on such old hardware like this. But everything is responsive and seems to be working well. I think it would feel a bit more natural once I get over the initial shock of using such an advanced controller on the SNES, but it isn't bad. Now let's move on to the Nintendo controllers, with the first being the tried and true Wii Remote. Pairing is a total breeze. We'll press the pair button on the receiver and the sync button on the back of the Wii Remote, and we're paired. The lack of buttons on the Wii Remote is going to put us at a disadvantage on a number of SNES games that utilize more than the B, A, and Y buttons. But it should be more than serviceable for simpler games or puzzle games like Tetris or Dr. Mario. I can't see myself using the Wii Remote on the SNES again though, but it's pretty cool that it's supported. Let's try the Wii U Pro Controller. Pairing is the same process as the Wii Remote, and I gotta be honest, the Wii Pro Controller just feels so good to play on the SNES. I'm probably a little biased because I absolutely love this controller. The D-pad and X, Y, B and A buttons have a similar layout to the SNES controller, which makes this controller my favorite to use so far. It's also super lightweight, like lighter than it looks, and it just fits so well in the hands. Now on to the Joy-Con. Pairing is the same process as the Wii Remote and Wii U Pro Controller, and this is by far the worst setup to use. Granted, all of the buttons we would need are here, minus the start or select depending on what Joy-Con you use, but these are just too small with the buttons being too close together to truly enjoy. Pretty cool to see current gen Nintendo controllers supported, but I would probably never revisit the Joy-Cons on the SNES again. And finally, we'll try the Switch Pro Controller. As with most other controllers, pairing was super easy. I use the Switch Pro Controller pretty frequently to play retro and retro style games on the Switch, but I have grown a little sick of the slightly spongy D-pad. Aside from that small complaint, this is a pretty solid way to experience SNES games, and I would recommend it. And that's all of the supported controllers I have to test out. Out of all the controllers that I tried, the Wii U Pro Controller is my preferred to use on the SNES. It might have a little bit to do with nostalgia goggles, since while not old, the Wii U Pro Controller has retro vibes while still feeling like a fresh and comfortable way to update the SNES experience. I'm going to mess around with it on my SNES for the foreseeable future and see if my opinion changes at all, but I think this is going to be my new daily driver. What did you guys think? Please be sure to let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for checking out Retro Game Attic. I seriously appreciate you all, have an awesome day, and I'll catch you on the next one.